exclusive interview, I spoke with Discord founder and CEO Jason Citron about the accelerated growth that this company has experienced during the pandemic, which has been extraordinary. When we started Discord, you know, we were very focused on creating a place for people who played games with their friends to talk and hang out, you know, like before, during, and after their sessions. And and we always sort of had a hunch that it, it, maybe Discord would be useful for things that had, you know, other than playing games. And early on started seeing a little bit of that around like, you know, open source software development kind of projects, but it was only really in the last two years, kind of starting in 2019, that we really started seeing people use Discord for, for more than gaming. And it's just accelerated so dramatically over the last year and a half. And, you know, now we have over 150 million people a month that come to Discord to, you know, study homework or, you know, um, participate in, in communities that they, that they love around topics they're passionate about, or um, just hang out with their friends and, you know, just do things together online. And given the average age range of Discord's 150 million monthly users now uh, aged between about 13 and 30 years old, I asked Jason about uh, what he thinks about safety and content moderation. Discord does not have a news feed and things can't go viral. So the nature of how, uh, you know, content, if you will, uh, you know, gets shared on our on on Discord is quite different. You know, you'll be in in a, in a space. Think of it almost like a you know a group chat with you know with ten or twenty people is the most common way that people are are engaging with Discord. And so, you know, in those kind of small spaces, like we leave it to to people to decide, you know, what um, is acceptable. You know, in their space. You know, in the context of our community guidelines. If people right. encounter content that you know, let's say the moderators in a space aren't deleting or is, is violating our guidelines. Like we do have a trust and safety team, full-time employees that people can escalate issues to. And because Discord is um, is not end, end encrypted, although we don't proactively read people's messages, if people forward messages to our, you know, or report content to our trust and safety team, we will go investigate and we will action communities that are violating our guidelines. It was originally created as a tool for friends to talk live with other friends while gaming. As a gamer himself and a father, I asked him what he thinks about screen time and whether to limit gaming for kids. I think that it's it's good for everyone to think about um, you know their children and how they're doing and what the priorities are in in in, in each child's life and how much time to to allocate to these things. I mean, I'm probably not the the best person to ask, you know, growing up, I played like more video games than you can probably ever imagine. And, you know, you, you, you know, you asked me how much time people should spend my, I was going to say like 500 hours a week, but, you know, clearly for me, I ended up channeling it into something productive and, you know, became a software engineer and I'm now, you know, running this company. So I, I think that video games today actually can really help people learn a lot of great skills, you know, especially online video games where you have to learn about cooperation and being a good, you know, a, a good sports, you know, a good sportsman or sportswoman, and leadership, and and trial and error and failure, and there's actually a lot of great, fantastic um, life lessons that get taught in the microcosm of playing online video games.